So I get a lot of data science questions naturally through my blogs and YouTube videos, but I've also been getting questions that are a bit more meta. The questions are more career oriented. People ask me, how can I get into data science? What do I need to become a good data scientist? So on and so forth. So the fact that people are reaching out to me with these kinds of questions is probably a good indication that there are a lot of other people out there with similar kinds of questions. So that's the inspiration for this video. Here I'll give my take on what is data science and what is the best way to get into it. So I'll preface this whole discussion with this is just my impression as someone that's worked in data science for the past few years in both an academic and now in a business setting and data science being the huge field that it is there are certainly a wide range of different manifestations of what it might look like across different organizations, businesses, etc. However, this is the kind of mental model that I've arrived at about data science and the different associated roles through my experience. So we'll start with this first question of what is data science? And to me, data science fits into a bigger picture, which includes a variety of different roles and responsibilities that all center around this core of data. Well, again, there might be different labels and details for these types of roles. The way I see it, there are generally five distinct roles in this data space. To list them, the first is data engineering. Second is data analytics. Third is data science, which is what I do and the main topic of this video. The fourth is machine learning operations and engineering. And then the fifth is data management. All these archetypal roles and responsibilities in the data space all serve this bigger data pipeline. So data engineering is the starting point, and then that goes all the way to ML operations engineering, and then data management kind of sits on top of this whole thing. Okay, so the first role, data engineering, is mainly focused on taking data information from the real world and bringing it to a place where data scientists, data analysts can do something with that information. And as a data scientist, I love data engineers because they make my life a lot easier. So every data analyst and every data scientist's dream is to just have a curated data set where everything is good to go, the data is clean, the data is pre-processed, and all they have to do is make a visualization or develop a model, so on and so forth. So good data engineers are a very valuable asset. Probably a big reason why it's such a big job these days. Okay, so the second role I mentioned was data analyst. And typically what a data analyst does is take data that is made available to them, through whatever means, and typically will generate interactive dashboards or visualizations, graphs, plots. They will typically tell stories with data. They'll make slides, they'll give presentations to decision makers and business partners and stakeholders. And a data analyst will typically use tools like Microsoft Excel, Tableau, Power BI, and some kind of interactive SQL application. So a lot of these tools don't require much programming experience. So in that regard, a data analyst role is typically less technical, for lack of a better word, than a data scientist role. And probably the biggest difference between a data analyst and a data scientist is that a data scientist will do a lot more programming than a data analyst. And so that brings us to the third role, which is the data scientist. What I do, a data scientist will do a lot of the same things as a data analyst. We will create visualizations, we'll tell stories, we'll communicate our findings. But like I mentioned, what I spend most of my time on is programming. So I use Python and that seems the most popular these days in the data science space, but there's also R, which is pretty big in the statistics community. There's MATLAB, which is big in the academic or scientific community. And then there's also Julia, which is a kind of new up and coming programming language. So it's not just a matter of data scientists use different tools than data analysts to do the same thing. Data scientists also will typically focus on developing models. So what's a model? A model is based basically something that lets you do predictions. You give it some information that you can measure and it will give you a prediction about something you care about that you can't necessarily measure right now. So this could be something like, given someone's past credit history, what's the probability that they won't make a credit card payment in the future? Models are definitely a powerful tool in science, in business, in finance, in sales, and basically any industry that has data and has things that they would like to predict. 
models are going to be helpful to that industry. Which brings us to the fourth role in this data space, which is machine learning operations. And what this role typically does is takes the model that the data scientist develops and deploys it into production. So it doesn't matter how amazing and insightful your model is, if it can't be used and deployed in the real world, it's not going to have any value. What this might look like using that same example from before, what's the probability that someone will make their credit card payment based on past credit history? So it's great if I develop a model and it's sitting on some server somewhere or sitting on my local machine or whatever it might be, but how does that help the people making the decisions of whether to increase someone's credit card limit or to approve a new credit application? So that's where the machine learning operations will be valuable. The fifth and final role sits on top of this whole pipeline. So we started with the data engineers who take the data and information from the real world and bring it to a place where analysts and data scientists can use it. The data analyst will typically take the data that is there and visualize it, look at it in different ways, and create stories and slides from it. The data scientists will do a lot of the same things, but will take it a step further in taking that data and developing models with it. Then finally, the machine learning engineer will take that model and deploy it into production. So this fifth role, which I labeled as data management, kind of sits on top. And what this role focuses on is handling the metadata, the meta information. So not so much what the values in a specific data table might be, but where's the data table located? What variables are in this data table? What do these variable names mean? What is the description of each variable? What data types are they using? Where is it coming from? Where is this data being pushed to eventually? Kind of keeping track of all the data about the data, which is very important. So this ecosystem, like all these different types of roles are critical to make sure the whole process is working effectively. Like you can't just have data engineers. You can't just have data scientists. You can't just have machine learning engineers. You really need every kind of piece of the puzzle to have data make an impact in your business or research or whatever it might be. As a final caveat, even though I've presented these five different roles as beautifully distinct and specialized responsibilities, in reality, it's not like that at all. There's a lot of bleed over, there's a lot of overlap. So just speaking from my experience as a data scientist, I do the data engineering work, I do the data analytics work, I'll do the machine learning development, I'll do the data management stuff. And that's just the reality of things. So while it may be the case at some organizations that these roles are very specialized, so a data scientist will only focus on doing data science type things, or a data engineer will only focus on data engineering type things. For the most part, there is bleed over. So if you wanna get into any one of these roles, it's good to have some knowledge and experience doing the other roles in this space. Okay, so now we'll talk about the second question, which is, how can I get into data science? So I'll first preface this again, that this advice is definitely biased by my experience and my data science journey. So there are certainly other paths to get into a data science role, but these are the tips that I would give to anyone that comes up to me and says that they wanna get into data science. I have three tips for anyone trying to get into data science. So the first thing to do is get a technical graduate degree. So probably 80 to 90% of the people that I work with in data science. They either have a master's degree or a PhD in some technical field. So what do I mean by technical? There's a lot of flexibility here. So I have a PhD in physics. I've seen PhDs in math, PhDs in statistics, master's in statistics, master's in data science and data analytics. Any training that has a focus on math, science, programming will be helpful to getting a job. And while you don't necessarily learn all that you need to know to do data science, in these different programs, there's typically a good amount of overlap. So in physics, you learn a lot of math and science and you do a lot of modeling. And so that's a pretty natural transition into data science. But second and probably the most practical is that it's just something to have on your resume. So the reality is when people are looking at resumes for data scientists, they're getting flooded with applications and there just has to be a way to just narrow down the applications to help make a decision. And typically the first filter that people use in picking data science applications is do they have a graduate degree and in what? And so again, I'll highlight, even though this is 
the background of the bulk of people I see in data science. They have a technical graduate degree. There's certainly other people working in data science without them. Maybe they'll just have an undergraduate degree, or maybe they got an undergraduate degree and did like a data science boot camp. So it's certainly not the only way into data science, but it is the bulk of what I've seen. Okay, so the second tip I would give to anyone trying to get into data science is to learn the basics. And what are the basics? So I would say there are three kind of core things that you need as a data scientist. One, you absolutely need to know how to program. I would definitely recommend to learn Python. The second basic, basic thing you need as a data scientist is the solid mathematical foundation. And so specifically what this includes is linear algebra, statistics, and calculus. Those are the three core mathematical topics that you need to be comfortable with. And then the third basic thing you need as a data scientist, which I personally think is the most important, but but is often the one that's focused on the least is communication. If you want to be a good data scientist, you need to be able to present technical information to a non-technical audience. You need to be able to translate your insights into something practical, into something that has implications for the real world. And the reason I think it's the most important is it doesn't matter how profound or impressive your findings are. If it doesn't make sense to people, if no one understands what you're talking about, it's going to have absolutely zero impact. It's going to provide absolutely no value to anyone. So again, second tip is learn the basics. Learn how to program. Probably Python's your best bet. Get the solid mathematical foundation and work on your technical communication. Okay. So the third and final tip that I would give to any aspiring data scientist is to do it. I think the best way to learn is by doing. So the best way to learn data science is by doing data science. And so what this might look like in the early days is just finding some data and doing a project, ideally using real world data. So not like curated and ready to go data sets that you might find on Kaggle for instance, but go online, try to find data sets, try to find data that is not clean. Use a web scraper to pull information off a website or reach out to your local network. Do you know anyone doing research that is working with real world data? Do you know anyone that owns or works in a business that is working with real world data? Try to get access to that data and come up with some projects that might be helpful to that person. So if you want to get good at data science, you got to do data science. So try to come up with at least one or two data science projects and do it from A to Z. And do the data engineering bit, do the data analytics bit, do the data science bit, and do the machine learning engineering. In other words, take the data from the raw source and bring it into a place where you can analyze it, create visualizations, look at the basic statistics, try to tell a story with the data, identify a problem, identify a project, then develop a model, do something that has real world impact that provides value, and then try to deploy it, maybe make a website, maybe make an API so people can actually use your project. And then I'll also say a lot of times it's not just about what you know, but about what you show. Like, let's Let's say you do the whole shebang, you do it all perfectly. You get real world data, you look at the data, you get the basic statistics, you make visualizations, you develop a model, and then you deploy that model and it has tremendous real world impact and it provides value. But if you don't present that information, no one's gonna know about it. So if you're trying to work in data science, you wanna get hired by someone to do data science, you need to not just know your stuff, but show your stuff. Show people what you've done, what you can do, and it's gonna increase your chances of success. So don't just do a data science project and keep it a secret. Make a portfolio, put it out there, and show people what you can do. Okay, so that's basically it. So if you watch this and you still have questions, please feel free to drop additional questions in the comment section below. The questions are really helpful for me. I feel like I learn a lot about the people that watch these videos through the questions that I see in the comment section. So I greatly appreciate those. I hope you found some value in this video. And after watching it, you know what to do next to start your data science journey, or you realize you don't want to be a data scientist at all and you're gonna open a coffee shop or something. Either way, I hope it was helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.